In this lecture, we're going to talk about defending against steal attempts with the 3-bet bluff. Now, if implemented properly, this is a very effective tactic. So let's talk a bit about why we want to defend against steal attempts with the 3-bet bluff. In today's modern poker and modern microstakes, a lot of people are positionally aware, and they're aware that they need to be opening wider ranges in later positions. However, they're not that strong of opponents at the microstakes, so while they are opening wider ranges preflop, they don't defend well against 3-bets. And so at the microstakes, that's why the 3-bet bluff from the small blind or the big blind is highly effective against the right opponent. And when you're targeting specific opponents, you want to look at some specific factors, and I have them listed here on the screen. So what you want to target is somebody that's opening a wide range in late position. So in the cutoff and in the button, or if you look at the HUD stats, if their steal attempts are fairly high, and I'm listing around 60% or greater, and it could even be around 50% or greater, that means that they're opening a wide range in late position to try to steal your blinds. So you want to look at that first. You want to target somebody that's opening a, ride, a very wide range in late position. Because when they're opening a wide range, you know that a majority of the range is composed of pure crap hands. Hands that they cannot call a 3-bet with profitably. So only a few hands in their range are going to be hands that can stand up either by flattening a 3-bet or by 4-betting you. A majority of them are just going to be pure crap hands and mediocre hands where even if they do call, it's not going to play well in a 3-bet pot. And for the most part, they're just going to have to fold them. Now, the other thing you need to look at, and this is the very important component, is that you need to see if they're folding the 3-bets or not. So if they're folding to a high percentage of 3-bets, and remember with our 3-bet bluffing, the math is ideally we need to be correct around 2 thirds of the time, not factoring post-flop considerations. So realistically, maybe we need to be correct around 50% of the time, considering we will have the initiative, and sometimes we'll be in position. So... With that said, we want to target people that are folding to a high percentage of 3-bets, and I think a good starting point is around 60% or more. And of course, the more that they fold to the 3-bets, the better for us. And you'll notice that a lot of people, the micro stakes, they will be opening a wide range in late position, but they'll be folding to something like 80% or 85% at 3-bets, because they just won't be defending well against 3-bets, and they'll be playing fit or fold in regards to playing against a 3-bet. They will flat with a decent hand, that's a good hand within a flatting range, maybe like pocket jacks or pocket tens, or ace queen or ace jack. They'll 4-bet you with the pure nuts, so pocket aces, pocket kings, and big slick suited, and they'll be folding everything else. And maybe if they're really bad, they will be flatting you with small pocket pairs. So these are the things that we want to look out for. We want to see if they're stealing a high percentage or not, and if they're folding to a lot of 3-bets or not. So if they're stealing a high percentage and they're folding to a lot of 3-bets, this is a perfect candidate for you to perform a 3-bet bluff. And you'll notice at the bottom of the screen I say target semi-competent opponents. And why I say semi-competent instead of competent is that really good competent opponents are going to be defending against your 3-betting range in a decent percentage of the time, they'll be defending with 4-bet bluffs themselves. They'll be flatting if they notice that you're 3-betting them a lot with a wider range. And so a competent opponent is going to play well against your 3-bet bluffs. A semi-competent opponent is one that starts to understand positional awareness. They start to open a wide ranges in late position, but they still do not play well against your 3-betting range. They don't play well against 3-bet bluffs. They play in a fit or fold manner pre-flop with either the nuts or with pure crap and they'll fold it down. So that's how we defend against steal attempts against a late position open. Now in regards to what you should 3-bet bluff, that comes down to you. So it's all based upon what you placed into your 3-bet bluffing range. Remember we started with the 1 to 1 ratio of value hands to bluffs in our polarized range. You can pick any hand within your bluffing range to 3-bet bluff opponents in late position. But ideally, my recommendation would be to stick to the suited aces because we block the likelihood of our opponents having an ace hand that, that they can call us with. And so that's an ideal factor since we're out of position. And also to 3-bet bluff with 
small pocket pairs because if we hit our set and they do call with a flat with a decent hand, say pocket 10s, pocket 9s, pocket jacks, and we spike a set, then odds are we're going to get paid off. Um, I ideally would not be 3-butt bluffing out of position with suited connectors simply because they're not going to play as well. We don't block the likelihood that our opponents are going to have an ace X type of a hand, and that may be the type of hand that they're going to call us with. So that's why I like using the ace X suited hands in the small pocket pairs to three about bluff out of position, and typically not so much the suited connectors. But yeah, in a nutshell, that's how you defend against steal attempts with three about bluffs. Later in this section, I will be doing some hand history reviews, and I'll be showing you some examples of me 3-butt bluffing with my bluffing range against specific opponents. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. If not, we'll see you at the next video.